Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, coming back tonight with another great mech review, this time the iconic Phoenix Hawk. Uh, so thanks to our friend and subscriber, Brian Henry, uh, been with us for a very long time, since the beginning, the early days of DFA Wargaming. Uh, Brian's been very patient, so thank you. This one goes out to you, man. Uh, so we wanted to take a look at a couple of Phoenix Hawks. Um, I wanted to look at the 1D. Uh, that's my personal favorite one because everybody knows I hate machine guns. Uh, to feel like the ammo is never worth it. So the 1D drops the machine guns off the traditional Phoenix Hawk chassis. Uh, and so it's just running around with a couple medium lasers and a large laser. It's got that 6.9 speed profile with the jump jets. Excellent design. Touted as one of the best recon mechs of the Star League era. So uh, we're going to pit that one up against its, uh, its big brother, the 3D. Uh, so the 3D is the Davian refit. Uh, with the Clan Invasion era technology. So basically uh, refits this mech with, uh, I believe, an endosteel chassis. It's got two ER large lasers, two medium pulse lasers, um, but it costs about 200, 250 more battle value. So what we're going to do is we're going to pit these two mechs up against each other. Uh, I think we'll expect to see a little bit more performance out of the 3D, but how much? Is it worth it? Uh, is that 1D still viable in the Clan Invasion era? Guys, stay tuned. It's coming right up. All right, guys, let's get this started. So we're going to kick it off with the Phoenix Hawk 1D. Uh, this is a 45-ton Intersphere medium mech that was debuted by House Davian in 2856. So uh, battle value of 1,083, so pretty reasonable. Um, it, it is pretty much on par with mechs like, you know, the Wolfhound and things like that. They're all in the high nines, low ones. Uh, also on par with like the, uh, you know, like the Crab, which is a little bit heavier. Uh, Hunchback also in that ballpark. Uh, but this mech is much faster than those, uh, those bigger ones, right? This is a 6.9, uh, and it also has a jump capability of uh, 6 hexes as well, or 6 inches. Um, if you play that way. Uh, either way, it's, it's a tremendous uh, in terms of mobility. Uh, on the heat dissipation side, it has 12 heat sinks equipped to the chassis, uh, all standard equipment, uh, as it is, again, that Succession Wars era uh, type mech. It has eight tons of armor, which is 83.7% coverage. Now, this mech, very strong in the torso section. So, um, it has that illusion of being extremely difficult to kill. Whenever I play this mech, um, or if more, more commonly when Kevin's playing it against me, I just have such a hard time bringing it down. And that is because you can look here uh, at this mech in the middle, this little diagram, you can see how it's just loaded up with armor on that CT. A little bit weaker on the arms uh, and the legs. Of course, the arms where all of the weapons are, a large laser, two medium lasers, um, that left arm housing two beams, uh, the right arm only housing one. Uh, no ammo on board, which makes this mech very survivable. Um, but let's take a look at the 3D next. Okay, so the Phoenix Hawk 3D, also 45 tons. This mech a little bit more uh, in terms of battle value, 1315 in total. Uh, this mech was produced in 3048. It was an upgrade uh, also by House Davian. Uh, and this mech has persisted much like its, uh, its younger brother there, basically forever uh, in through the lore. So from 3050 for this one uh, until basically uh, the, the lore has stopped being written uh, in the 3100s. Uh, this mech is equipped with an XL engine and an endo steel structure. So that frees up a lot of tonnage. Uh, it also has double strength heat sinks, which is huge uh, for this chassis. So total dissipation of 24 points of heat every round. Uh, also has that same really good movement profile, 696. Uh, it has a half a ton less armor, so armor factor of 120, uh, still very strong in that torso section, just a little bit peeled off the left and right sides there, um, but you can kind of see uh, as compared to the 1D, overall very similar distribution. Uh, one of the key defining features of this mech is its anti-missile system. So that's mounted in the right arm uh, along with an ER large laser and a medium pulse laser. Now that pair, that tandem is found in each arm. So it's got two ER large, two medium pulse. That makes this mech uh, very heat prone, uh, but also, you know, it's got some decent firepower for a 45 ton chassis. Okay, so let's dive into the offensive benchmarks. 
So um, we'll start with the baseline. The Phoenix Hawk 3D is in sort of the lighter or more translucent colors here. Um, and you can see just base, uh, basically the, the 3D is outperforming the 1D across the board. Uh, so all the way from 21 inches, uh, really it's actually 19 inches where that large laser, that ER large rather, comes into play, all the way to point blank, uh, the 3D can just simply outperform. Um, the 3D does build up quite a bit of heat, and you can see even in the baseline, which is set at a four-point heat maximum, uh, it's pretty much working that heat meter as much as it can to generate uh, that damage, whereas the 1D, not so much um, really until those medium lasers come into play at nine inches. Um, if we look at the red line benchmark, that really sort of shows you as soon as those medium pulse lasers come into play on the 3D, you really need to keep an eye on your heat. Um, you will incrementally build up heat with firing the pair of ER, layered, ER large lasers over and over, um, but it's really not until those medium pulse lasers come into play um, that you really see a giant penalty there. Um, and so what this tells me is that the 3D probably has a little bit more room for optimization, again, at that six inch mark, uh, and even maybe further out um, when you can fire those ER large. The 1D on the other hand, uh, not so much, really not building up heat again until both of those medium lasers come into play at nine inches. And even there, uh, it's fairly controlled um, and fairly easy to kind of fire alpha strike and then take a breather, dissipate some heat and get back in the mix. Um, but both of these mechs do suffer from some heat um, heat issues if you're not careful. The optimized benchmark, um, the Phoenix Hawk 3D, again, um, just kind of walking away with it here, uh, able to kind of push the damage curve a little bit um, in the closer ranges there. Um, really not a whole lot um, that we could do with, uh, with either mech, just a small increase um, of a few points of damage over baseline. Um, so we're looking at about nine points for the 1D um, and, uh, and really about the same nine points again for the, for the 3D as well. Still, uh, I was hoping for a little bit more out of the 3D, but still, it's, it's not bad. Uh, again, we're talking about a 45-ton mech. So if we look at the numbers, um, and you can see in the bar chart, the 3D just outperforms the 1D across the board. That's not, it shouldn't be a surprise. If the upgraded, refitted mech was worse uh, and costed more, that would be a problem. Um, but, you know, overall, the 1D is still really uh, a solid chassis, able to deal, deal out quite a bit of damage there. Um, 74.6 on the optimized side. So um, let's see how these guys do in terms of lethality. Okay, so this is really telling, and this kind of shows the power of having a pair of ER large lasers, what that can do um, to help, you know, weaken a target and sort of wear it down until you can bring your short range weapons into play. Um, and that's really captured in that kill curve up at the top. You can see the 3D uh, has basically a much easier time taking that javelin down um, ends up destroying it uh, in total 72.9 percent of the time where the 1d only destroys the javelin 14.3 percent of the time um, because the reality is uh, just a single large laser and a couple mediums really not going to get the job done that often but that pair of er large you know you can get those kills uh, here and there um, you know again you, you've got those big damage, big punch weapons. You can land a couple of headshots if you're lucky. So um, it was interesting to see how that shook out. And you can see on the kill analysis there in the pie charts, um, the head kills for the 3D are almost double uh, what you see on the on the 1D. And again, two, two large lasers versus one, sort of what you would expect. But again, those CT kills, the uh, the 3D really walks away with it. Um, so look at it, looking at some of the other um, interesting things here. So damage per hit, overall very similar, right? The ER large do a little bit more damage. There's two of them. It pulls the damage average up a little bit. Um, critical hits, um, not unsurprising there. Um, more critical hit options and opportunities with the 3D. It has more weapons. The weapons hit harder. Everything does more damage. Um, the time to kill was substantial. We talked about that. That's evident in that kill curve. So basically the 3D killing that javelin almost six turns sooner um, than that 1D is able to, to take that javelin down. So when we talk about lethality, it's substantially higher with the 3D. Even though on the damage side, you know, it was only maybe like 30 points of damage or so over 12 turns difference, but this lethality really tells uh, sort of a different story about how much more firepower that 3D can bring to bear. The 1D is tougher 
just comes down to it. Um, now the 3D does have that AMS ammo on board, but that really doesn't play uh, a large factor here. What really is the defining feature, as you guys might have guessed, is of course that XL engine. Uh, so losing a side torso, taking a few crits, I mean, that, that'll just do that mech in. Um, and so you can see that in the death analysis there, um, the engine deaths on the Phoenix Hawk 1D is less than a percent, but on the 3D is all the way up at 27.4%. Uh, so that's a huge uh, differentiator. When we look at the overall survivability of these mechs, the 1D is actually 20% more survivable, uh, which is a big deal. Um, you know, and again, when we think about sort of the efficiency of the mech, what we're paying for the mech, the return on that investment, the survivability uh, plays a big, big key, uh, big role in that in that sort of decision there. Um, the armor diagram in the middle doesn't really tell anything um, too great of a story. Uh, under armored on the arms and legs, over armored on the torsos. I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing. Now, granted, this mech does have all the weapons in the arms, so that sort of makes me cringe a little bit, but at the end of the day, uh, it's not so under armored that it's uh, that it's useless. It's just again, uh, just a little bit of a redistribution there. Um, it is a little weaker than average on the back, but so if you can find yourself in a situation where you can get around to the back side of that Phoenix Hawk, um, that's always an opportune thing to do on either of these chassis. Um, but overall, just a, just a pretty tough mech to bring down um, on the 1D. The 3D though, um, yeah, that 47% number is not so great. So on the mobility side here, um, very similar uh, overall. Now, the interesting differentiators here are uh, the target mod degradation over time. So the 1D did a much better job of holding a higher target mod. So a target mod, again, calculated by how far you can move. The simulation takes into account if you have, you know, leg actuator damage or otherwise slowed down, you know, you use your jump jets when you can, if you can claim a better modifier. So all those sorts of things are baked into this. Um, what you see with the 3D basically, and the reason it has uh, more of a degradation, even though the motive hits are the same, is because the reality is um, if it actually makes it to turn 12, it's just trashed. Um, this mech, again, 20% less survivable. So if it's making it out that far, it's missing a leg, it's missing a whole bunch of actions, hips frozen, right? So you tend to see that, whereas that 1D tends to survive longer in better shape. Um, so if you're wondering why there's such a distinct difference in those two numbers, that's what that is. But overall, the motive hits very similar. Um, you know, the critical slots are just slightly more padded out on the 1D, um, but that didn't really make a difference. I mean, again, 0.61 versus 0.6, uh, it's basically the same, right? Um, you know, if I ran this simulation a second time, I might get numbers that are, you know, within a hundredth of, uh, of a difference anyway. So at the, at the end of the day, really... Um, really similar there. And again, we saw these mechs a little bit under armored on the legs, but it didn't really seem to matter too much. Um, so, uh, you know, what does that mean? Um, that 0.6 number, by the way, uh, just as a reminder, that's the number of motive hits on average you can expect per game. By motive hit, I mean any, any leg actuator or the hip. So um, any one of those being hit you expect about 0.6 uh, leg hits, you know, that are go going through the leg, going through into the internal structure and hitting an actuator for some sort of leg penalty, um, some sort of speed penalty, I mean. So again, really not bad. So that, that light armor on the legs, really not, um, not really affecting the mech here. And again, we talked about it, that plus three modifier uh, really does a good job of keeping that mech alive. As you can see, both of them hold that high modifier all the way in, you know, till about, you know, they get at that 10 inch, nine inch range mark so very solid mobility all right so my favorite of all the efficiency analysis so what we do here is we take a look at survivability we take a look at their optimized damage we smush it all together and we get an efficiency rating so let's start with that effective benchmark so we've got the 1d it's more survivable but does less damage we've got the 3d that does a lot more damage but dies a whole lot more which one's going to come out on top? I don't know. Uh, so looking at the uh, the area chart there, so you can see the dark purple, which is the 3D, basically overwhelms the 1D across the board um, when we factor in that survivability and get that um, that effective uh, average calculated damage. The 1D does overtake the 3D a little bit at that close range, you know, that five inch to three inch type mark. Um, when we think about the damage loss in terms of a percentage. Um, so this is our optimized damage, 
um, and the effective damage, right? So looking at these two things, what was the percent drop? The 1D actually lost a lot less, 19.4% versus the Phoenix Hawk 3D, which was at 25.2%. Now, both of these numbers are a little higher than what I would like to see. Most mechs should be probably around 10 to 15%, um, especially when you're talking about lower numbers, I guess, um, even though I guess with lower numbers by percent, you know, a point is going to be more. Um, typically with these, with these speedier mechs, you see, you know, you see a lot less of a drop, but um, regardless, I digress. So when we looked at the 1D, it was able to gain 17.1% when we optimized the damage from baseline. We lost 19.4% when we factored in survivability. So the net change from baseline to effective uh, was a loss of 5.7% in total. The 3D, on the other hand, was a loss of a net loss of 17.9%. So it lost a lot more, uh, but even still, uh, it outperformed the 1D. Uh, so where did that shake out? On the efficiency rating scale, the Phoenix Hawk 1D came in, clocked in uh, at a very meager 3.96. This is definitely, I mean, visually you can see this on the left side of the bell curve, not real great. It's, it's actually pretty abysmal and I had expected more. Uh, I have so many of these Phoenix Hawk models like in a box, like the old Ralpartha uh, Lance packs, if you remember those. I think every single one came with a, <laughs> with a Phoenix Hawk. I have so many of them. Uh, but the 3D gives me hope. Uh, that's not bad. It's right in the meat of the pack, maybe a little bit above average at a 5.22. Um, so not terrible. Uh, but, you know, again, it's a 1300 point mech. Uh, it does tend to build up heat a lot. I don't know. I'm not in love with the 3D. I would almost rather run the 1D um, and just and just leave it at that. But um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that more when we get into the threat analysis. Uh, the gunnery sensitivity. Let's talk about this. So very similar. Uh, both of them were like three, three, nine, three, eight, and change. That you know, they're not. They're they're pretty. They're, they're decently sensitive to. You know, you'll see an improvement as you add. Um, you know, as you, as you pour battle value into these guys to make the gunners a little bit better, um, but it's nothing really um, substantial. Honestly, if I were playing these guys, I would run them at a gunnery three, maybe a gunnery four if I if I needed to fit the points in, but um, I certainly wouldn't run the 3D at a gunnery four. Let me be clear about that. I think for the 3D, because of the ER larges, I would run it a three or a two, you know? Um, the, the 1D though, I'd say a four or a three, um, even though they have similar sensitivity, I still feel like those ER large, if you're gonna use them and you're gonna have to take on the, the heat to use them, you better hit with them, right? So um, that's sort of the way I think about it. Uh, at the end of the day, neither of these mechs really blew, blew me away. I was, I was hoping for like a six or a seven on the 3D, uh, but it just doesn't seem to work out like that. Again, you know, that 1300 uh, BV price tag is, is pretty steep. Um, but let's take a look at the threat and see how that shakes out. All right, so we'll start with the 1D again. Not a whole lot going on on the threat analysis here. Um, you know, what I see is that the zero heat ACD and the sort of maximum alpha strike capability, really not that much different. Um, you know, you're looking at a few points there. Um, the, the peak zero heat ACD on the Phoenix Hawk at three inches, 10.8 damage. Um, the peak alpha strike, you can basically max your damage as soon as nine inches and that does 18 points of damage. So what that tells me is like, yes, you can start whacking them at nine inches for your full alpha, but don't start doing that until you get a lot closer. And, and that makes sense, right? You're, you know, as you get within that three inch mark, your, uh, you know, your range penalty is gone for those medium lasers because you're at short at that point. And that's probably a good time to take on that, that heat penalty, right? Which um, for this mech, you know, again, um, it, it can get pretty toasty. I think builds up, what, 18 points of heat um, with a, with a pull. So, um, you know, something to consider there. All right. So what do we got here? Um, our threat envelope on this mech, not too bad. Uh, obviously you've got the medium laser on the one arm. You've got a large laser and a medium on the other arm. So that left side, you've got a little bit more of an arc of fire. You know, this mech can, can cover basically a decent field of fire. It just doesn't have the range, that 15 inch or 15 hexes uh, on that large laser. Uh, it's really not long range. So this mech is sort of limited to me and what roles it can play. And the two roles that I picked for it is either cavalry, right? 
Um, so you're either gonna run this mech across the field, start firing that large laser as soon as you can, stick the mech in uh, with some bigger mechs and just try to use those jump jets to get those rear shots, right? Alpha strike when you can, cool off when you can. Again, this mech can build up a lot of heat, uh, but you can, you know, you can jump alpha strike, take a turn to cool off, jump alpha strike, take a turn to cool off. It, it could work, right? Um, that is really how Kevin likes to use this mech, get it in close, use its jump jets to outmaneuver me. Um, I hate it. So that's the one role. The other role really is a skirmisher. Um, and so, you know, this is where you would kind of float it at mid range. So, you know, anywhere between 12 and eight inches, you know, and you're just trying to keep it far enough away where you can turn and bolt with that nine inch or nine hex move, right? That run move. Um, but you can lay down some fire and harass the enemy at range. I don't really know what other roles I would play this one in. Interested to hear what you guys think about that. But let's take a look at the 3D. All right, now this one has definitely a meteor uh, threat chart here. So the 3D really can start whacking people at 19 inches. That's, that's healthy. Um, and it can do that damage pretty well all the way to point blank range. Um, when we look at the sort of the peak alpha strike on this mech, it's 18 points of damage at nine inches. I'm sorry, um, 28 points of damage at six inches, looking at the wrong number there. That, that actually, if we wanna compare them, right? 18 inches is, is what the 1D does versus the 28 what the 3D does. So there's a range disparity because the medium laser hits at nine inches, that medium pole sort of penalized uh, and doesn't start shooting uh, until six inches under the you know standard long range uh, rules there. So that's interesting. Um, the Phoenix Hawk 3D, as we talked about, can build up a lot more heat. Uh, in a single pull, it can build up nine points of heat. Um, that's just walking. If you're jumping or running, that, that number can get a lot higher. Um, and that's at six inches, again, when those medium pulse lasers come into play. Um, but it can do pretty well firing both ER large. You know, as long as you're walking or running, you're only building up a point or two of heat. You can do that for a few turns and then lay off and only fire one ER large, get back on it. Um, Arc of Fire looks really good on this mech. Again, that 19 inch is so much more healthy uh, than the 15 inches. I mean, it makes a huge difference, that four inch, four hex uh, difference. So, um, especially with the speed that this mech has. Uh, with the lasers on the arms, it can cover a huge Arc of Fire. So you can run straight away from somebody, twist, aim behind you, and still snap off an ER large shot while you're cooling down. Um, so that gives this mech a lot of tactical flexibility, which I like. Um, and again, you know, that threat chart for a 45 ton mech looks pretty appealing. Uh, so when I think about roles for this mech, there's a few. Um, I think it can play in a fire support role. Uh, it just a, you know, direct fire. It's got two ER large. Again, it can fire them both. Um, really, if, if you're at range and you're not too concerned about moving quickly, you can do that for six turns in a row, really seven, and then take a turn to cool off um, and you would be just fine and you would bleed off all that heat and you'd still be able to fire one ER large the next turn. Um, so, you know, I think it can play that role and it can deliver some, some pretty healthy damage for a 45 ton mech. Um, and, you know, again, this would be sort of the, either the little guy in a bigger fire support lance um, or it's just sort of the big mech in a field of smaller mechs um, where it's really just trying to lay down some beam weaponry and cripple those those faster mechs, uh, the smaller mechs, like, you know, the wasps and things with like a single shot. The other role for this mech is the second line role. Uh, and so when I say second line, I mean, this is a mech you're going to keep in the backfield. You let your bigger mechs, your, you know, your Wolverines, your Battlemasters, you know, those types of heavier mechs, Marauders, right? They're all getting in. They're going to take the damage. Um, and then once the battle is under control, you can move the Phoenix Hawk into that six inch, three inch range and start reaping those, uh, uh, those medium pulse lasers and getting those in the mix as well. Um, lastly is a skirmisher roll. Uh, again, it has the mobility. It can easily get out on a flank. It can support itself. It's all beams. It's not gonna run out of ammo. Um, so you can really deliver some pain if you position this mech correctly. Um, so, you know, whether it's a sort of a fire support like a line mech sitting in the back, firing in or out on the flank being mobile, um, depending on your, your opponent and, and tactically how you want to do it. Um, you know, if you want to kind of draw uh, enemy mechs off, especially lighter, faster ones that need to come and engage the Phoenix Hawk, it's great. You know, if they take something like, you know, uh, something smaller, a flea, a javelin, something like that, and they try to close on this Phoenix Hawk, 
I mean, it can shred them. Again, 28 point alpha strike. That's a lot of damage for a small mech um, to take in one salvo. And, and you know, you're building up, yes, uh, nine points of heat with that if that happens. But if you work on the mech a couple rounds with those pulse lasers, it's really gonna, um, it's really gonna <laughs> just crumble. And remember those pulse lasers, the reason the ACD jumps so much at six inches those pulse lasers have that minus two um, to your to your total target number, right? So where you know at long range, you know under rules as written, you're looking at a plus four penalty. With a pulse laser, you're only looking at a plus two. That's incredibly large. That actually puts it on par with the medium laser in terms of accuracy um, at that particular range. So uh, it's a pretty good weapon all around, and, and it's doing a little bit more damage too. So. At the end of the day, really like those medium pulse lasers. Yeah, they get a little toasty, but um, still overall very good. So that's the Comparo, guys. We're wrapping it up, but a couple final words. I think the 1D is a solid mech. It's tough. It can get in there. It can stick in. If you need a fast mech that's going to survive, I think the 1D is the way to go. If you want a small mech that's like a Wolfhound, it's fast. It's even more mobile than a Wolfhound because it's got that jump jet capability. Um, it's even better than the Wolfhound at long range. Yeah, it's a few more points. I would really look at this mech. Awesome. And it's got that anti-missile system. Let's not forget about that. So when it's taking counter fire uh, and when it's in a fire support posture, you know, it's even giving it a little bit more survivability. Um, but the 3D is not a mech that you want to run in. Uh, it's not one that I, I, I don't think you want to get it in point blank range. I do think that that XL engine is just too fragile. Um, to put it put in jeopardy, um, you know, make sure you surround them with some bigger, meaner targets that the enemy is going to want to focus on first. Um, but still, a solid mech. I think they're both great. Uh, and let's face it, who doesn't love the Phoenix Hawk? It's just uh, one of those one of those classic mechs. Um, so really excited to see the uh, the resculpt on that uh, with the Kickstarter. And of course, if you need one right now, uh, you can go over to Aries Games and Minis. They have almost every variety of Phoenix Hawk you could possibly imagine. Um, so check those guys out. You can you can grab your grab yourself a Phoenix Hawk there. Um, but guys, that's it. We're wrapping it up. So thanks again for watching. Let me know what you think. Would love to hear all of your thoughts and comments on this one. And of course, stay tuned. Always more great stuff coming from Death from Above Wargaming. Guys, have a good night.